Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing a Thanksgiving cook with me where I share all of my Thanksgiving family recipes with you guys and our traditions, my Thanksgiving slash Christmas a little bit, tablescape and all of the goodness. So stay tuned for all of the recipes and motivation for your Thanksgiving meal this year. Happy turkey season. I don't know about anybody else, but I am so pumped to dive into some turkey this year. I pre-prepped a lot of this stuff so that I could show you guys my recipes before Thanksgiving. And I'm so excited to share some of my secrets with you guys, starting out the video with my pumpkin pie recipe, which is super easy. My pumpkin pie recipe for the crust, which is what you're going to start out with, you're going to need one and three quarter cups of flour, two teaspoons of sugar, three quarter teaspoon of table salt, six tablespoons of cold unsalted butter, a quarter cup of shortening, and seven to eight tablespoons of ice water. Now the key here is to make sure you combine all of your dry ingredients and then you're going to dice up the butter cold. You wanna keep everything nice and cold. So dice up that butter and just work it into the flour mix until it is about pea size. And then you will add in your shortening and do the same thing until it's about lima bean size. And then when you add your ice cold water, I added in about four tablespoons at a time and I just run through it with my fingers. You don't wanna overwork it. And then you want to put it into a disc shape, refrigerate it for 30 minutes, and then flatten it out. I am not the best baker by any means, but this is an amazing recipe. Um, what I like to do is form it to my Pyrex pie dish, and I will cut off the excess, like I am showing you guys here, with a knife. And then I will form, just with like my fingers and my thumb, I'll kind of form a little bit of a like decorative crust. I don't know. I'm again not an expert by any means. This is so simple though, you guys, and it costs like less than two dollars to make, so it's even cheaper than buying pie. And I love pumpkin pie, it's one of my absolute favorites. Um, but once you are done making that crust nice and pretty, you just want to make sure that you pop some holes in the bottom of the crust so that it doesn't bubble up, and make sure that this pan is pre greased or is sprayed down as well. And then you're going to wanna to cook that at 375 for about 15 to 16 minutes. Now for the filling, I use the easy pie filling and follow the directions on the back of the can. So I will not include that recipe for you guys because it is right on the back of the can. And then you pour it into your crust. Now I pre-baked my crust. This is called blind baking your pie crust. And the one thing you wanna watch out for is that crust getting too golden brown, but you're gonna to wanna to cook it according to the directions on the back of the easy pie filling pan and it turned out perfectly it is so good but I did cover the crust with tin foil after about 10 minutes just to make sure it didn't get too brown moving on to the turkey which is my most favorite part is disgusting but you're gonna want to make sure that you take out that turkey neck and the gizzards and heart which is in the neck cavity take that out and set it aside for later because you are going to want to use that for a stock and make sure that you rinse off your turkey really well and pat it dry with paper towels and now I'm moving on to the aromatics and the inside of like seasonings for the turkey I like to cut up one medium yellow onion and then a few celery stalks and you're going to put half of that onion onto the bottom of the pan and you are going to put all of the celery in there one can of beer which is so like strange but it's a family tradition um, and it turns out really yummy and then two cups of um, turkey stock and then you're going to place your turkey right on top of that and to season the turkey now my secret to a super moist delicious browned turkey is by using butter um, in between the skin and the meat itself I'll show you guys how I separate the skin from the meat um, but this is what I season it with which is a little bit of rosemary poultry seasoning so salt, pepper, garlic powder, and a stick of butter. You're gonna to wanna to mix that all together and then set it aside until you're ready to season your turkey and butter up your turkey. So here I'm taking off my rings and my ponytail because you don't wanna get any of that nastiness <laughs> caught in your rings or in the ponytail. So to separate the skin from the meat, you literally just stick your hand. You see how I'm kind of maneuvering uh, my hand between the meat and the skin? I know this is just so grotesque, it's disgusting, but I promise you the turkey will turn out so much better. 
So just with your hands, that's all you need to separate that skin from the meat. You're just gonna push all the way to the front and then you're gonna push your butter into it after you are done. And it is really hard because the surface is slimy and the butter is slimy. So just get that butter in there the best you can. And then massage, you can see here, I'm like massaging with one hand and placing the butter with the other. Massage over the skin um, to make sure that the butter is spread evenly. And this is going to give you a really moist, delicious turkey. It has been my go-to for several years now. Um, and make sure that you don't forget um, the drummies and like as far as you possibly can go um, with spreading the butter on the meat, do it because you're gonna have the most amazing, moist, buttery result. And for the rest of the butter, you're just going to wanna spread that across the skin because that is going to brown up the skin and give it that really beautiful golden brown um, once it's done cooking. I love this recipe, it's so, so yummy. And like I said, I can't wait to dive into the turkey this year. Um, now your next step is you wanna make sure that the legs are tucked in. You can tie them with dental floss or with some yarn. And then for the wings, make sure you tuck those so that you don't have burnt wings. There's nothing worse than burnt turkey wings. So tuck those babies under. Um, and then for the seasoning on top, I will do garlic powder, salt, pepper, and poultry seasoning again. I will generously season the inside. So make sure you, to make sure that we are seasoning from the inside out um, and then generous and then generously apply to the outside as well. This isn't a super salty mixture. I just do a little bit of salt, so don't feel like you're going to over season it. And then the inside of the turkey, I do some celery and onion, and then I'm doing a little bit of rosemary and thyme. You can definitely add sage to this as well. And you can do a little bit of carrots inside the turkey and on the base of your oven roaster or turkey pan um, for a little extra flavor. Moving on to the turkey stock. So I am going to put the gizzards, the heart, and the neck along with about five cups of water and a bay leaf. I'm gonna let that simmer for a couple of hours and this is going to help us for a really good base to our turkey gravy later on. Um, here I'm just showing you a little water hack if you want to make your water look super fancy I cut up one Honeycrisp apple and one orange and this like citrusy apple blend of water is so Yummy with like a little sprig of like rosemary and a couple cranberries in it. It's so so good um, And I absolutely love doing this even if the holidays look a little bit different for you this year Just spice it up with something simple as like flavored water Still do all of your decorations, make it a fun at home Thanksgiving. I know this year looks super different for all of us, but just try to enjoy it to your fullest extent, you guys, but just spicing it up with some of these things can still make it feel special. So moving on to the stuffing, I will start the wild rice. You wanna start that ahead of time because it takes about an hour. Now the turkey, I forgot to mention, I cook it at 325 um, for the first like few hours, about a couple hours until it reaches temp, and then I will put, turn it down. So I want to time everything out correctly. I wait until there's about an an hour left on the turkey and then I start prepping everything else. I do a little tray with olives and pickles and then I will do a meat and cheese tray. My kids love to snack while I'm getting the Thanksgiving meal ready so that's why I like to have all of this stuff set out and kind of fills your time so you're not having a bunch of downtime in the kitchen. The wild rice like I said takes an hour so at this point I just have the wild rice and the turkey cooking. The turkey is almost at temp and I have about 55 minutes to wait until that wild rice is completely cooked. The stuffing recipe that I'm sharing with you guys today is a, a wild rice sausage stuffing recipe. My family likes to add mushrooms. You don't need to add mushrooms and for the sake of this video, but it is one of our most favorite family recipes. This sausage wild rice stuffing is to die for. Highly recommend you guys check it out.
So the next step in the stuffing, when the wild rice is just about ready, I will dice up half of a yellow onion and then I will take a pound of ground sausage, brown that up, add the sausage in there, and once it's thoroughly cooked, you are going to want to set that aside and combine it with the wild rice when it's all done. Make sure that your wild rice is cooked thoroughly and is drained so that it doesn't get watery, and then you will move on to the remainder of the stuffing, which is simply just cooking your stuffing according to the back of the box. Now here I am doing mashed potatoes. I did about 10 Idaho potatoes so that we had lots of leftovers. I love doing Thanksgiving leftover recipes and mashed potatoes last so long in the freezer and I love to just like take a little bit out at a time. So I just took advantage of making a big Thanksgiving dinner to show you guys what I would typically do if I were hosting a big meal. Um, like I said, I cut up 10 Idaho potatoes and I wanna mention here as well that all of these items except for the wild rice are from Aldi and I did this entire Thanksgiving meal for less than $25. Yes, less than $25 and I got a 15 pound turkey and all of my items including the pie, the sausage, the green bean casserole and the mashed potatoes everything for less than $25. It was such a great deal. So I wanna show you guys how you can do your Thanksgiving dinner on a budget. I, like I said, still cooked for about 10 people so that I could freeze the leftovers and use the leftovers in the best leftover recipes ever. So anyways, I'm using a box of herb and a box of turkey stuffing. I'm gonna mix them together. And then once that is fluffed up, you can combine it with the wild rice and the sausage. And moving in to my green bean casserole. I just do two cans of green beans. You can use fresh green beans here as well. It just has to be about four cups of green beans. And then I do a can of cream of mushroom. Now the recipe typically will call for a little bit of milk. You can add a splash of milk if you'd like, but I find that it gets a little bit soupy if you add milk. So I skipped it here in today's recipe. Um, and then I do a little bit of salt and pepper just to season it up. You're gonna mix that all together and then you will top it with some crispy onions. Um, and the crispy onions that I show in this video are from Costco, but I did get a little thing of crispy onions for a about 70 cents. Um, anyway, so here I'm showing you guys fluffing up the stuffing, which I then combine with the wild rice and the sausage, and it is it smells divine. This is the best ever. Um, then you're gonna wanna put that into a casserole dish and cook that at about 350 for 40 minutes or until it is a little bit golden brown on top. Um, and I like to time that out with the green bean casserole. That takes about 30 minutes, so I start the stuffing first, and then I'll move on to the um, green bean casserole next. And once I put the green bean casserole in, I will start making my gravy, I will start the mashed potatoes, because those take about a half hour. And I just like to take the um, leftover juices from the turkey, this is the best gravy and I will just put it in a large measuring cup and strain it. I usually double strain it um, and the strainer is a little bit big for catching those smaller bones. So make sure that you guys are paying attention to um, any kind of like bones, etc., that could be leaking through your strainer. Again, my strainer wasn't the super greatest for this. Um, and then I combine it with that um, turkey neck and gizzard and heart stock that we did earlier in the video with the bay leaf and I combine it all together and then I start to make a little bit of a flour and water slurry. This is the key to getting really like lump free and smooth gravy. Um, you can also use cornstarch. Cornstarch is another alternative if you don't want to have gluten in there. I actually prefer cornstarch. I just didn't have it on hand in the house, but um, that flour water slurry will help to prevent the clumps in there. And then I like to use a whisk um, to mix it all together. And I do some parsley, salt, and pepper. Mix that together. I don't wanna over season. I don't wanna overwhelm. I'm definitely one of those people that likes to put gravy all over everything on my plate. I just take like a whole ladle full and just slap it on everything. So I don't want it to be over seasoned. And then your gravy is done and you can set it to the side. For the mashed potatoes, I do a little bit of whole milk. I do two sticks of butter. Now the key with mashed potatoes is you don't wanna over mash them because it will 
change the consistency of them. So don't over mash them, do just to the right amount. So you'll see me switch over to a, to a rubber spatula here after I'm done mixing in that butter. Um, and then my family likes to add a little bit of sour cream. I've seen some people do cream cheese, which is really interesting to me. Um, and then I will do salt and pepper. Again, I keep the mashed potatoes a little bit more bland because with the gravy and everything else, there's so many other flavors going on. I like to keep my mashed potatoes just simple and buttery. And here's the turkey all done. I'm having Mike carve that. I did not show that in this video. Mike traditionally will carve the turkey and that's what he did for me today. But I got that nice golden brown skin. That's what you're looking for. Um, and then here is the green bean casserole and the stuffing all finished. Everything came together so well. It took me a total of like three and a half, four hours to cook everything. Sipped on some red wine while I was cooking. Listened to some Michael Buble. And here is my Thanksgiving tablescape, which is like a merry Thanksgiving tablescape. It is definitely more so like Christmas than it is like Thanksgiving, but I have Christmas decorations in the house right now. And I just incorporated just a really traditional, beautiful, tablescape on a budget. I hope you guys give some of these recipes a try. I hope it inspired you to try a couple of new recipes this year. If you try any of them, take me over on Instagram. It is the most heartwarming thing when I see you guys trying my recipes in your own home. All right, you guys, I will see you on Friday for a part four to my Christmas decorate with me. Okay, bye guys.